Hey guys, welcome to ExcelForNoobs.com. In this tutorial, I'm going to show you how to create a Gantt chart using Microsoft Excel 2013. If you don't know what a Gantt chart is, it's basically a chart that shows you the time frame of a project broken down by task. It also shows you the time frame of each task. Um, that's a basic Gantt chart. What our Gantt chart is going to do is it's going to show progress, the progress of each um, of the overall project and the progress of each task and it's going to do that by showing the number of days completed and the um, for each task and the number of days remaining okay um, also it's going to do this it's going to be automated so our chart in Excel will always automatically be updated with the number of days completed and the number of days remaining according to um, the date so as time goes by obviously there's going to be more days completed and less days remaining and that will automatically be updated and I'm doing that using the today function and the nested if function that's I've been trying to figure out how and a way to explain this in the tutorial um, but you're just gonna to have to play with it and learn it on your own to understand this conceptually um, how I'm doing this it's not not difficult but difficult to explain okay so you can see here first we have to enter in all of our data that our charts going to be referring to so I have entered in my task task 1 through 8 and then here I've manually entered I have columns for start date total days days completed and days remaining here I've manually entered in my uh, the start date for each task that's when each task is to be started and this is the estimated total number of days that each task should take. So task one, we estimated to last 12 days. Over here, task six, we estimated to last 17 days. 17 days. All right, I'm going to try and explain this. This is where it gets somewhat complicated. Um, first, I'm going to explain to you what the today function is. The today function in Excel is entered like this. Sorry. Today, we just type in equals to open up. To let Excel know we're entering in a function equals today open and close parentheses that's all it is when we hit enter the result of that function will give us today's date um, if I do this two days from now it's gonna give me um, June 9th as a result so you can see that today's date is June 7th all we had to do is enter the today function and Excel calculated it for us figured out the date that is always up to date. All right, and that's how we're going to um, automate our Gantt chart. So uh, <clears throat> we're doing this inside of the if function, but basically um, where I started getting on this idea was I don't want to mess with my formulas in here, but you can see that what I'm doing is the idea that I have was basically saying if today or I'm just saying today minus pretend like this is days completed over here this uh, column today minus the start date and what that formula does I'm using today's date minus the start date and that gives me the number of days between the start date and today's date obviously it gives me a date there I need to change the formatting to general and it gives me 22 days so today June 7th there have been 22 days between May 16th and June 7th alright where that becomes a problem is that 22 days is greater than 12 12 days so we can't have 22 day, two days completed of a task that is only to take 12 days that's where I have to use the if function and the same problem occurs if I were to go down here with a day that has with a task that has a start date that hasn't even arrived yet the start date's July 12th right here but right now it's June 7th and what we get the problem we get here is if we use today's date minus the start date we get a negative value because and then let me again change the formatting we get a negative value because um, the date hasn't even arrived yet 
The only way that the only way where that would work out perfectly is right here if we are in between that time frame. So today is June seventh. So task four and task six, it works out great. But right here on days that we have not that haven't even arrived on tasks that their start date hasn't arrived. It doesn't work out. That simple formula doesn't work out. And the same thing for um, for um, tasks that have already been completed. So now I'm kind of uh, basically I'm describing this the best way I can. I hope I'm doing a good job. But it will take some playing with and thinking on your part to understand it if you don't already. Okay. What I did was I used the if function. Um, now I'm going to describe what the if function is. The if function basically just says if I'm going to enter in a value over here to describe it to you. What the if function does is it says if and it, we have three arguments. One argument is our logical test and then you can see here we have an argument that the value of true and, the, and then um, if our test is not true if it's false the value that's going to be the result of our function if that logical test is false so there are two potential results depending on whether or not our test is true or false and I'll show you what I mean so what I'm going to say is if cell C11 if the content inside cell C11 so I click on there is greater than zero okay now that's my um, logical test I separate it by a comma our next argument is the value of true so what I'm saying is if if the content inside cell C11 is greater than zero then the value will be cell C11 the content inside cell C11 however if that number is less is not greater than zero that means that my our, my test is false and I'll just say my value will equal zero so if the number in uh, cell C11 is greater than zero then my result of this function will be the content inside cell C11 however if it's false if this number was less than zero then it would simply equal zero and that's going to a date format again switch up the general and you can see that my result is five now watch what happens when I change this to a different to a um, value less than zero or my result is zero so now you have an understanding of the if function it's dependent upon the logical test which is the first argument of the if function okay <clears throat> days completed I have a nested if function. That is an if function inside of the if function. I'm using an if function as one of the arguments in the if function. Let me do this with the function arguments dialog box. So instead of me entering in the functions manually like I did before, I can enter them right here if I wanted to. I'm just showing you each argument separately. So, remember I'm using the today function minus the, well, I'll just show you. You can see in the function arguments dialog box, I have entered the, my test saying um, today minus the start date. If that's greater than cell C2, which is right here, then my result will simply be cell C2. So if it's greater than the total days, if today minus the start date, if the number of days between today and the start date, if that's greater than the total days of the task to be completed, then my value will simply be the total days that it took to complete the task. However, if that's not true, this is where I use the if function, the nested if function. If it's not true, my value will be my value will be the if function again, which is I'm saying if today minus 
the start date is less than zero, the value will be equal zero. And if that is false, if it's greater than zero, then the value will simply be the today function minus